So Hekma has been understood by some Mufassirun as actually uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet. Because the Quran gives you the teachings, the Prophet tells us what to do in the proper way. And that is the Hekma. Doing things in the proper way is Hekma. But for the philosophers, it's abstract thought is, you know, Hekma. And getting us nowhere. <coughs> uh, in fact, getting us further into the black hole. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, Prof. Go ahead. Nowadays, I have seen in many uh, academic discourse that people they, they use this term Hikma as strategy. Uh huh. <laughs> so, okay. Udo uh -huh. That is okay. in such a way. Yes, yes, yes. Right, right, right. right. I Co correct. I mean, in yeah. that context, you see, uh, the word Hikma is used in different contexts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that context, is with wisdom in the proper way. You know, uh, when you invite people, even when you go to Firaun, don't just uh, shoot him. Yeah. You know, you have to talk nicely to him. La <laughs> Allah Yes, brother. Thanks. Did you just say that um, abstract knowledge is not that important or something like that? I'm saying that um, the philosophers are fascinated with abstract thought. Right. Forgetting right action. In Islam, thought must lead to action. Right. This is where the philosophers, I mean in the, in the Muslim world, we have philosophers like you know, Ibn Sina, Al-Farabi, uh, they were being criticized by the theologians for being engrossed with Greek thought. Because Greek thought is basically speculative uh, and not about right action. Islam is for Correct thought leading to right action. But it is kind of disturbing and actually okay, no problem. And actually I have read maybe eight not eight, actually sixteen pages of your paper. MashaAllah. This interesting but it's also thing, abstract. Yes, one thing actually I mm, most probably missed you have mentioned that but I didn't uh, most probably missed it, that how do I distinguish between a false knowledge and a true knowledge? Oh, okay. Very important. I think... Um, because without mm -hmm. the abstract version of the knowledge, yeah, yeah. It's, it is rather difficult for me to understand. Yeah, yeah. Because action is something, someone did something, I can copy that. No problem. Right, right. And if I want to have some inference from that, I need to somehow get that whole data right, that yeah, okay. abstract knowledge and to distinguish between false sure, knowledge. Sure. Okay. I think I will just be very brief here. Uh, Muslim scholars and the Quran uh, divides knowledge into two, um, not divisions, two dimensions. Divine knowledge and human knowledge. That is why I emphasize the word human knowledge. The Islamization has to do with human knowledge, not divine knowledge. And a lot of the meaning in the Quran on El is with reference to divine knowledge. When we read the Quran, we come across the word Ail. In most cases, it refers to knowledge given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through revelation. But in some cases, Allah criticizes human knowledge like Karun trying to claim that he has his own knowledge. Mu'amala. Mu'amala. Mu'amala also. This is human knowledge. Okay? So okay. when we're talking about divinely revealed knowledge, then it is very clear uh, as to what is false and what is not false. What is uh, against divine knowledge is false. What contradicts divine knowledge is false. That is when we, we were referring to that dimension. But when we come to human knowledge, physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, um, finance, statistics, statistics accounting, accounting uh, this uh, has to do with mu'amalat, it's not ibadah, not aqidah, and this has to do, here, here you have to use uh, the, the power of your reasoning guided by the power. Because the Quran it is silent on, on what is the best way to manage a bank, for instance. The Quran doesn't tell you. Uh, so when the Quran is silent, then you have to use uh, your mind, your reason, 
but the reason which is infused with faith, not just pure reason, uh, you know, which is divorced from faith. So then you can tell. Then you have to go by the best practices in the world today. Um, don't you feel that? Well, maybe you not. You don't feel that, but when I hear this type of discussion, I somehow feel that, that well, this is the end of the story. And this is just the beginning, not the end. <laughs> if there is a, not a road leading to progress, oh, yeah, then, yeah. then yeah, basically, yeah. well, if I can't make use of reasoning, and if somehow... I, I never said we can't make use of reasoning. I said use your reason, reasoning but guided by revelation. Right, right. So yes. if we, if something is really true, mm -hmm. and if my reasoning is correct, correct, then I should go there. Okay. And not contradict to the divine knowledge. No, of course, not contradicting divine knowledge. Right, right. Yeah. So but if <coughs> I think we will come to that as we go to the Ulul and the, the yeah. problem that I normally face yeah, yeah. when I hear this type of discussion, mm -hmm. that well, if this is something is true and I'm in search of truth and I'm making best use of my whatever logic reasoning I have then I should be there or I should be at the way towards that then what's the problem with using pure logic? No problem as long as that pure logic is not contradicting the divine revelation. Go ahead. Well, then the problem is I can do this. I can do this as long as this is supported by this. As long this as this type of argument is not free. Okay. If we, if you want to have just free thinking, because we were referring to Plato, Aristotle, also yeah, okay, about yeah, great yeah. thinkers, and most of you are aware of that. Mm -hmm. Many verses of Plato, many mm -hmm. um, arguments of Plato, actually mm -hmm. left something mm -hmm. which is supportive of Islam. So I think I think Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, those mm -hmm. people of that that line of argument, yeah. they are great in the sense that they had a religion and they divorced themselves from the religion and yeah. pursued the pure knowledge. Mm -hmm. And pursuing pure knowledge, they found something which is actually supporting of yeah. very orthodox, authoritative type knowledge like Islam. So. I'm, I'm kind of like... No problem, just let it, let it off your chest. You know, if you have problems, no problem. I have, I have if no we problem. Just follow the, if we just follow the pure logic without being biased in the other way, then we should get the, the, the right conclusion. Inshallah, no problem. Okay. Because, uh, I mean... Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Here, the two basic things. Number one, for Ibadah. Aslu ibadat tahrim. Okay. Aslu mu'amalat ibadah. Yeah, right. If there is any prohi mm -hmm. prohibition, it will be prohibited. What Otherwise, there is a scope of... When we are talking about, about matters of ibadah, that is religious worship in the narrow sense. Ibadah would be in accordance with... That to be prescribed. When it comes to, uh, you know, transactions, mu'amalat, all kinds of transactions, not covered, by revelation, then the Aqal is free to use. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, it should not be a problem. I it's think we should continue. Okay. One because we issue have a very, take huge, uh, very great civilization. Uh, our civilization did not start in the 20th century. We had about 1,000 years of civilization. Okay, so, uh, and we have benefited from, from the Greeks, no problem, we have benefited. But the scholars did not take Greek uh, art did not take Greek um, uh, sculpture, they did not take Greek drama, they did not take Greek religion with all the myths of Zeus and, and you know, Prometheus and all that. They took logic and I said, logic is very important. I said, we did not invent logic, the Greeks invented logic. So this is a whole, you know, we have to put it in perspective. We're not rejecting what is pre-Islamic. We're saying, that we have to be guided by uh, what the Quran says and then the Aqal has to be used. And when I come to the Ulul al -Bab, you see how important is the Aqal. Yes, 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 okay. Yes, okay. So we have 59 pages more to go? <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, yeah, how do you feel? Should we...
break here or no, it's okay. 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 okay, all right, good. Thank you very much. But I don't want to, to, to really so, tie tell it. You, <coughs> one, one more thing I want to mention that is in your point number 10, you have uh, written adoption of wisdom, but it might, and cooperation in all that is good. Yeah. Okay, so good, uh, I think it should be a so bit extended. Good. That is it good uh, in light of Islam or something else? Okay, no. um, this is just uh, summarize. This is just <coughs> points. Yes, you know. uh, every one of them can be expanded. Of course, uh, it's uh, uh, one of the of the sure, sure, no problem. But let me take you to number eleven, uh, brothers and sisters. <coughs> number eleven. Number eleven is Khashatullah. Uh, you are not just believers. You are scholars, and you are people of knowledge. And what does Allah say about people of knowledge? Yeah. People of knowledge, what does Allah say? Innama yakhsha Allah min ayyadihi ulama Of all his servants, only such as are endowed with knowledge stand truly in awe of God, for they alone comprehend the very God is almighty, much forgiven. So this should be our attributes, the khashya to Allah. Okay, now superiority of knowledge, I will skip all that. I will skip that, I will skip all that. Prof. Uh, Abdullah, I'm sorry you didn't have the text. Can you give a text to Prof. Abdullah? You have a copy of the text? Mm -hmm. You have a spare copy? Yes. All that, uh, these are all guidance from the Quran. And uh, since we are believers, Muslim scholars, uh, we have to take the Quran seriously. Uh, unless, of course, we are uh, the liberalists who want to challenge the Quran, then that's uh, a different um, uh, approach altogether. And the Quran talks of those who are endowed with knowledge, the importance of knowledge and, and the importance of, of, of the mind. Is all there. Uh, and so the Al-Mu'min al alim the learned believer, is much more uh, important than the Al-Mu'min Ghayr al alim So that I think is well known. I come to the Quranic paradigm of unified and integrated knowledge on page 10. On page 10. Uh, and I quoted. Uh, I here, the problem of uh, commercialization of higher education, I have a uh, reference to the readings, Nick Osman, Harry Lewis, uh, Excellence Without a Soul, How Harvard Has Lost Its Soul. And then I also um, referred to Chomsky. I was watching Chomsky a few nights ago on uh, YouTube uh, in his dialogue with uh, Foucault. Um, and then uh, Wallace Stein, a great sociologist, talking about the end of the world as we know it, social science for the twenties. Uh, Wallace Stein is not a guru predicting the end of the world. He said, he is a sociologist. He said, the world as constructed by Western social science is coming to the end. It's not Kamal saying it. He's an eminent sociologist in America ex-president of American Sociological Association saying the world as we know it, that is to say as the Western social sciences constructed it, has come to a terminal end and be prepared for a new world. Okay? And that is said by Wallace Stein. And if you look at Ilya uh, Prigojin, the Nobel laureate in chemistry, also talking about the end of certainty uh, in his book. And then I talk about the Ulul Anbab, Ulul Nuha, Ulul Afsar, and uh, with the need to have more Islamicized uh, intellectuals, scholars, scientists, professionals who combine fikr and tafakkur. Fikr and fikr and tafakkur. And be careful of the muhlikat, also the destructive elements, uh, the base desires, the nafs, the power. <coughs> And I come to the Aqal. Aqal is very important. And um, many scholars, including uh, uh, Qaradawi, say there's no other religion that places uh, high value on the intellect than Islam. You can compare it with other religions. Uh, 
Uh, and you can look at a book by, uh, um, what's his name, uh, Rosenthal, a very important book by uh, Rosenthal. Let me write it. about 60 something, you know, 60 plus. A uh, very important book indeed. He spent years researching on this. Non-Muslim scholar, by the way. Non-Muslim scholar. But a very, very profound. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Knowledge Triumphant by A.R. Rosenfeld. There are two big Rosenfolds in among the organics, this is the other person for the other one translated uh, Now he said um, there's no other civilization that this is a higher value on knowledge than Islam. And this is coming from a <coughs> non Muslim scholar. Yeah. Sir, recently there's also a book written by. Uh, Thomas Fuller, uh, The World Without, Without Islam. The World Without Islam. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. In that book, we also find it out that what would be the appearance, what would be the shape of the world when Islam would not be. Good, yeah. And yeah. for that reason, uh, he, he, he pointed out that darkness, the darkness would be in the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he basically, they, see, he basically pointed out that, and especially, the policy maker of America mm -hmm. that they should not war against the uh, Islam in the name of terrorism, in the name of terrorism, right. rather let the people know what is the true message of Islam. Because Very the good. true message of Islam, 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 yes, true message of Islam is the panacea for solving the problems of the total humanity. Okay. So I, I happen to know him in Virginia. Yeah. He used to work with CIA before. But his son embraced Islam, and uh, he has taken a different view. And, and uh, his book is, um, uh, is basically imagine a world without Islam, it means a great thing, basically. Because Islam brought knowledge and science and all that. There's another book that I want you to look at, and this is very recent. This is by a very eminent, um, uh, also Western uh, historian of science. The title of the book is um, Islamic Science and the Making of European Renaissance. Islamic science and the making of European Renaissance he is an eminent um, scholar at Columbia University and came up with this book. Of course, he has written many books in, in uh, very well known journals. And here again, he uh, tells us in a very scholarly way in what way the world has really benefited from the discoveries of Muslim scientists, Muslim engineers, uh, astronomers, mathematicians, uh, doctors, uh, physicists, architects, engineers, um, and so on. And he showed in his book, um, I happen to have a copy of that book, how Copernicus had actually taken from Ibn Shalbir the idea of uh, the, uh, 
the, 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 the Earth is round, the circumference of the Earth, and the distance between the Earth and the Moon, and, and so on, are taken from, from Muslim scholars. All this, all this is because of the use of the aqal, the use of the intellect, and not the abuse of the intellect. What we have today is the abuse of the intellect. The intellect pronouncing itself autonomous from God. It has come up with great things. We, have, we do not deny that, but at the expense of belief in God. Okay. All right, now if we look at this, uh, now I come to uh, many, many uh, studies from the Tafsir about the Ulul Al-Bab. Ulul Al-Bab basically people who have sound intellect. And you are the people who have sound intellect. Because if you don't have sound intellect, you're not becoming to this kind of program. Right? You probably spend your time elsewhere. Because you have sound intellect, you chose to be involved in this kind of program. The intellect directed you to something worthwhile. Okay, so I have given you, you can you can yes. look at that. Sorry, please. One point to raise. Yes, please. Now you have uh, mentioned <coughs> integration of knowledge. Okay. Don't you think the integration of professional knowledge and divine divine knowledge as well as integration of Islamic knowledge and non-Islamic knowledge are essential? Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Then how? Okay. Of course, this uh, will go into the details, but let us maybe be brief here. Uh, integration between, let's say, revealed knowledge and uh, human knowledge is in fact the basis of our faculty in IIUM. It's called the Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, where we put human sciences and revealed knowledge together. Sociology, anthropology, political science, um, history, um, psychology uh, are being put together with usul fiqh, fiqh, usul um, din, and comparative religion, and Quran and Sunnah. And our students have to learn English and Arabic. They major in they may major in psychology, but they have to minor in revealed knowledge. If they major in revealed knowledge, they have to minor in one of the social sciences. We have been doing that for the last 20 years or so. Okay. That's one of the ways of it. Yeah. Okay, so here there's a long discussion on the Ubi al uh, taking you uh, back to the um, sources. And why do I emphasize so much on the Ulul al -Bad? Cite the references, uh, especially recently, what is happening in the in the Western countries, the you know, the, the homosexuality, the the, the guy. This example you can provide. You can, yeah, there are so many examples. You know, the economic system, the moral system, the cultural system, the political system. They are all based on human intellect divorced from uh, revelation, which is an abuse of an amana by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The aqal is not created by you. And I said in the beginning, Allah says, "Inna sama wal basara wal fuada kullu ulaika minhu masoola." Okay, your hearing, your seeing, your intellects are going to be asked by Allah because they are given by Allah. 
the Western, the conventional, the secular, do not admit it. So to me, it is an abuse of, of the intellect. Yeah, and uh, God gives you very little. You know, you, the, the knowledge that you have is very little. So don't be too proud about it. And being proud is one thing, but divorce from revelation is another thing. And we have uh, we are seeing now the, the consequences of that divorce from revelation by the collapsing structures which uh, are being now being sort of uh, hesitantly being admitted by Western scholars. But unfortunately, Muslim uh, you know leaders are still aping uh, the collapsing structures of the West. But we hope in the Middle East things will change. Because for a long time, uh, they were just aping the Western systems. Be it capitalism, or socialism, or liberalism, or whatever. Okay? So, Ulul al Bab is very important, and I want you to, to make a special uh, study of that, and maybe that could be part of your assignment later on. Because in what way because I want you to understand the whole implications of Ulul al-Bab and see how, uh, based on the understanding of the Ulul al-Bab, you're going to bring about the kind of intellectual reform with regard to your own disciplines. Yes? So you to Ulul al-Bab according to the Holy Quran. So for we know, to uh, hear Ulul al-Bab, we, uh, we have to fulfill some characteristics. First of all, uh, Allah has declared in the Holy Quran, Allah Zina is Mahun al Qawla. That means first, we have to list and then we have to do the best part from it, best use of it. Then Allah will guide it. Hada Allah. But uh, to be a Ulul Allah, uh, really do we possess all these qualities and without having all these attributes or qualities, how we can be? Okay. That is my question. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good question. Well, I hope you will have time to look through because I have taken from Al Qadari right down to Saiputu, and even after Saiputu, Al Mutawalli, Shah also. Okay. And also at uh, the Malaysian Indonesian scholars on on this. So it's quite a comprehensive study of the concept of Ulul Al Bab. Uh, People who use the intellect in the proper way. And um, okay, you said that uh, to get this uh, this um, status of rule and that you have to fulfill certain conditions. Um, yes, you are right. Uh, the, the attributes of the rule and that are given in the Quran. But I don't want to take your time on this. It's almost twelve o'clock now. Um, but um, I, I said that. You are the Ulul al -Bab. We have a minimalist definition, and you can have also a maximalist definition. On a minimalist definition, that is people who have sound intellect, or people who use their intellect in the proper way. Aren't you belonging to that group of people? I think you are. Because otherwise you will not agree to be in this kind of uh, of program. So that's why to me you are already Ulul al -Bab. But Ulul al -Bab may be one star. Uh, there is Ulul al -Bab five star, mm. six star, <laughs> seven star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ulul al -Bab first star. You get a star, no problem. Yeah, but just one. Maybe two by now. Maybe after after finishing this course, three star. <laughs> Going back to Bangladesh, five star. <laughs> So, just as mu'min, you know, have different levels, iman has more than 60 stages, so also ulul al -Bab. But the minimum definition of ulul al -Bab is people who use the intellect in the proper way. Now, in other words, basically, if I reduce it, you are not influenced by your desires. The hawa does not influence your thinking. That is objective thinking, that is abstract thinking that the brother was referring to earlier, using the mind objectively, without being influenced by desire or emotional biases. You are already ulul al yeah. But, level one, 
Or maybe level two. What, what level are you in now? <laughs> <laughs> He's asking is he's telling for source of Ulu Allah is. <laughs> no, because if you go to the to the verse of the Quran which tells you that the, the highest level of Ulu Al-Ba'ad, the Why are you moving? وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا الْأَرْضَ سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ إِلَى آخِرِ الْآيَةِ 190 until 194 of Ali Imran. And this is, this is the group that is going to save the world. I do believe so. Because this is a group that has been in the past, in the present, and in the future. And given a very nice uh, name, Allah gives a very nice name. <coughs> Literally, people have the essence of things. Literally. Because look can also be essence. But all the Mufassir will say it was Mughul. to do with intellects. So, very important. Intellect is supremely important. Without the intellect, la aqla lahu, la. But uh, what is it? Uh, uh, you cannot have a religion unless you have your intellect. So it is the intellect that makes you accountable to God. Okay, so the intellect is very important. And uh, Mr. Rosenthal is telling the whole world that no other civilization this is the intellect higher than Islam. But what kind of intellect? Okay. Now, how do you feel? Are you still okay or you want to have a break? Yeah. Yeah. We are having a fresh. You okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Finish that. Please, you, you do not come from Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> you have been here 15 years. <laughs> you know I'm acclimatized. Please don't speak. <laughs> They just arrived at 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> so they need to sleep and I'm not. Yes. 